Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana and Defense Lieutenant General Antonio Parlade Jr. amid calls from the Senate to remove him as spokesperson of the Task Force Against Local Communists. We are involved there. Kung tanggalin mo yan si, si General Parlade, ay tanggalin mo na rin kami dyan sa yung uh, armed forces. Ibig sabihin, yung armed forces, walang pakialam dyan sa NTFLCAC, which is na, not true. Senator suggests the removal of Parlade as task force spokesperson because his position allegedly violates the Constitution. Lorenzana says he doesn't see any violation on the part of Parlade as he is part of the armed forces. He adds Parlade's expertise is being utilized as the spokesman of the task force against local communists. Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drulon and Senator Ping Lakson both pointed out that Parlade's appointment violates the Constitution. Article 16, Section 5 of the Philippine Constitution states, No active member of the military shall be appointed to a civilian position in the government. Law professor Tony Lavinia also says Parlada's appointment is explicitly prohibited by the Constitution. Police and military are blocking the families of four activists killed in the Bloody Sunday raids from claiming the bodies from a funeral parlor in Antipolo Rizal. Authorities are still keeping the remains of Melvin Nasigao, Mark Libahasno, and Randy and Puroy de la Cruz since they were killed on Sunday, March 7. The Sigo and Bakasna were housing advocates while the Dela Cruzes were part of the Dumagat tribe. Panguban also says the families, along with the paralegal team of Karapatan, are being harassed by state forces. Police claim that Tanay and Rodriguez local governments are making funeral arrangements for the remains of the victims. But the National Union of People's Lawyers say the victim's family should have control over their loved one's remains. Meantime, presidential spokesman Harry Roque promises to hold accountable any soldier or police officer found to have murdered the activists. Roque says he believes in the Justice Department's investigation into the matter. Exactly a year after the World Health Organization declared the global pandemic, the Health Department on Thursday, March 11, logs 3,749 new COVID-19 cases, the highest in nearly six months. This brings the Philippines' total infections to 607,048. Okta Research earlier raised the alarm over cases rising faster than expected in Metro Manila. It says cases may reach up to 6,000 daily by the end of March if the surge continues. Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Verjera attributes the spike in cases to the public's non-compliance of minimum standard health protocols. Meantime, it's deja vu for residents in Metro Manila as local governments reimpose curfew hours. Former U.S. Presidents Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, and Jimmy Carter star in two new public service announcements for the coronavirus vaccine alongside former First Ladies Michelle Obama, Laura Bush, Hillary Clinton, and Rosalind Carter. In order to get rid of this pandemic, it's important for our fellow citizens to get vaccinated. This vaccine means hope. It will protect you and those you love from this dangerous and deadly disease. I want to go back to work and I want to be able to move around. Noticeably absent in the vaccine PSAs are former President Donald Trump and Melania Trump. When asked about Trump's absence, a spokesman for the Ad Council says one of the PSAs was filmed at President Joe Biden's inauguration in January, which Trump did not attend. The new ads are part of the Ad Council's nationwide vaccine education campaign titled It's Up to You. Now it's up to you. In entertainment news, Eraserhead's frontman Ellie Bondia debunks a long-running myth about the song Spoliarium. It's not about the rape of actress Pepsi Paloma. In an episode of fellow musician Sab Magalona and Jim Bacaro's podcast, Buendia shares the song was actually about drinking. Buendia also reveals the ending and Joey mentioned in the song were the band's roadies, and not comedians Vic Soto and Joey De Leon. Soto and De Leon, along with fellow comedian Richie DeHorsey, were accused of raping the 14-year-old Paloma and her fellow actress Guada Guarin in 1982. Though the accused denied the claims, they publicly apologized to her on national TV before she dropped the charges against them. Paloma was found dead in an apparent suicide in 1985. Meanwhile, songs by Korean singers under Kakao Entertainment's portfolio will reportedly return to Spotify. This comes after the two music giants reached an agreement announced in separate statements on Thursday, March 11. Spotify says the new deal means songs under Kahao Entertainment will return to the streaming platform and will be available in South Korea. On March 1, thousands of songs by K-pop artists were pulled out of Spotify after it reportedly failed to reach an agreement with Kahao Entertainment. Spotify previously did not have rights to stream thousands of songs in South Korea, 
where Kakao Entertainment's parent company Kakao also runs a streaming service, the market leader Melon. Spotify only launched in South Korea in February 2021. In other news, Warner Brothers Japan unveils the official trailer for Rurouni Kenshin, the final, on Wednesday, March 10. It is set to premiere on April 23 in Japan. Rurouni Kenshin, the final, is the first of a two-part live-action film series slated to culminate Kenshin Himura's adventures and will reveal the mystery behind the mark on his cheek. Actor Takeru Sato reprises his role as Kenshin, while Japanese-American actor Makenyu joins the cast as the new lead villain, Enishi Yukushiro. Since 2012, a total of three Rurouni Kenshin films have been released, including the sequels Rurouni Kenshin, Kyoto Inferno, and Rurouni Kenshin The Legend Ends. A post claiming former Senator Bongbong Marcos graduated from Princeton University is false. Former broadcaster Jay Sonza posts on Facebook a list of pro-admin prospective candidates for the 2022 Philippine elections, including Marcos, his sister and incumbent Senator Aimee, Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio, Senator Bongo, Senator Manny Pacquiao, and Public Works Secretary Mark Villar. Sonza says Marcos is a Princeton University graduate, Armed Forces of the Philippines Special Forces training graduate, former Ilocos Norte Vice Governor, Governor and Congressman, former Senator. Princeton University is not listed in Marco's resume posted on the Senate website. Instead, he names Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania and Oxford University as schools where he obtained his master's and undergraduate degrees. He did not obtain his degrees from both institutions. In an exclusive report in 2015, Rappler found out that although Marcos did enter Oxford University and Wharton School, he did not complete the programs he enrolled in, which is why the records do not show Marcos in their lists of graduates. Marcos insists his educational records are accurate. <laughs>